Today is going to be a little bit different. Today we're going to enhance an existing project rather than to make a new project. And that's important because the last guide was definitely packed full of information but missed a very key finishing touch. The way we moved the items to the player was actually by destroying a block above the player. This definitely showed a destroy animation every time you click the sign which is not the least favorite. In this guide we will remedy just that and we will make a very smooth transition and we're going to learn a few more vital components for command blocks. And the first one and the most important one are the tags. Tagging an item will make sure you always target the right item. The second component we're going to learn is summon. With the summon command you can literally summon any entity that means also items to a specific location. And the third command we're going to learn is execute add. With execute add we can simply target the player and instantly have the coordinates of the player available to summon items towards. I hope you're going to enjoy this guide. Please don't forget to subscribe and like because there's going to be much more advanced guides. Soon we'll launch a new series with command blocks that will actually teach you how to make a mini game yourself with all the advancements like capture the flag and everything all packed into it so definitely don't want to miss out on that. For now enjoy the lesson. Now back to the sign. So basically how this works now is when you press the sign and there is stock on it which is not now of course so we have to restock then you can keep buying as long as you have currency. Now you definitely can see the block breaking well it's a way to do it and I actually want to teach you something about entities. One of the very last command blocks we covered was kill entity of type Minecraft item and then the barrel. So we basically destroyed the barrel just before it hits the player. And that's exactly the way we're going to now target the item. The very short period that it's actually an entity and an entity we can change. That means as soon as the item hits the player, we cannot any longer target the item. Of course, targeting an item from a barrel in a barrel works perfectly, but it would be even easier if we can just simply target the entity and change the item entirely and that pretty much works like this if i were to put 64 diamonds in there and i made a little setup i press the button and i instantly get 64 items now this was the buyer sign and let's see what we're going to keep now first things first i want to change the first block the first box is going to check how much gold we have but i didn't like how that worked especially because we had to put another one on unconditional to make it work which can do it really simple we're simply going to say execute if score player gold so the gold of the player is more than the store managers shop item 001 gold that simply means as long as your gold is higher than what the shop manager is asking for the product which is stored in shop item 001 gold then it's gonna pass so i have zero gold now if i activate the block it's gonna set test failed if i'm going to set my gold to two i'm gonna activate the block it's gonna say test passed simpler than this is not possible then we're actually going to check if there's enough stock execute if score store manager shop item 01 stock so if the score of the stock of the store manager is more than the store manager's batch now if you know what we did last time you know that we have a stock which is all the items the store manager put for sale and we have a batch which is the amount of items they want to sell each time the sign is clicked so that's the batch then we run because when we have an execute if score of execute whatever we do with score there's always going to be a run afterwards that actually going to determine the score scoreboard players operation gold is store manager shop item one gold now what we do here of course is very simple if there is enough stock we're going to run an operation on the gold of the player and we're going to subtract its gold with the price the shop manager set for his items. So then we have this already fixed. We have a check for gold and we have a check for stock. Now this one is of course unconditional. And then we have of course this one still. Now first things first, we're gonna put it below this one. There we go, let's empty it. And we're gonna put it unconditional. Everything can go unconditional. Execute store result block. Now we have another execute store. So we know we always have to follow up with a run later. And the run we're gonna do will store that in a block this time. Then of course we have the cords and that's of our first chest and that's where we initially stored the item in what we want to sell. So we're going to target that specific item and this item is of course located on slot 0 and there's always a B behind that. Now then we need a temporary storage count and then you can see you can choose out of different types. Just going to store it in a byte 1. So we just that's actually just a temporary storage we can store the number in. 
run scoreboard players get stall manager which is of course our fake player and then shop item batch now this is maybe the most complicated command i've ever done so basically we're saying we want to store the result into the item in slot 0b of the chest located at 196.63-300. And we don't want to have the item but we have the amount of items changed by this. So this is actually just a data of course. If we would do data get of the block we're looking at and it's always the block you're looking at that you see the chords from in the chat. Then you'll see we can target multiple things. We can target the Z, the ID, the I, the X. And we can target the items, which we just did. We targeted the slot 0B. And we also targeted the count of this slot 0B, which is currently 1B. Okay, the boat unconditional. Let's give that a go. So we know for a fact that it's only one item in there. Let's throw a thing in it. And now it's 16. And if you do data get again, you'll see the count is 16B. Because we basically said that we want to take something from the storeboard and we put it into the item. And if you want to work with the scoreboard, you always use the execute store. And if you want to work with actually items in chest, etc., you always use the data. So now we have the correct amount of items in the chest. And that's not going to influence the working of our item set at all. Because we still have Endicide this time. And then the stock is now 64. And now the stock is, of course, 94. Beautiful. It just modifies the chest again. So now we have one in there. And now this is a grass block, of course. But if we run this one again, we don't have enough gold. That makes sense. Let's give me a decent amount of gold this time, because else it will never work. It's working perfectly. We have a stack of 32. So we have the correct items. Now, from this point, it's incredibly easy. This block can go. We don't have to destroy any block anymore, so this one can go. Now, of course, this one is really important still. So let's type it again. Scoreboard players operation. So that would means we're going to modify a score on the scoreboard for a player. It's going to be the store manager. And we're going to target his stock because we haven't changed his stock yet. And we're going to subtract the batch from it. So we sold one batch because we had enough stock, we had enough gold. And we're going to now subtract it from the stock. So that one was really important. Then we have the set block, which is this one. Actually, that's the one that changes the redstone block back. So we definitely want that, but actually we don't want it there yet. I kind of want it to be the last one. I'm going to put it aside for a bit. And it's a really important block because as you can see, the birch plank always happens. If we now change this to a redstone block, it instantly turns into a birch block. So nobody ever sees that this executed. Now then we had kill entity, which we don't need, of course, anymore. And then we have set the sign, which we definitely do need to do. So let's copy it and we're going to put that actually next to you for a bit because I want you on the bottom as well. What we're going to do now is we're going to summon an item on the location where the player is standing. Execute at, and I think execute at is pretty new as well. Execute at player, that means we pretty much summon where the player is. And basically all it stores is the court of the player. We do a run already and we do a summon, which is also a new one. And now we can choose out of any form of entity. And an entity is a moving object, but there are also objects on the floor. There's so much items in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually target an item. This specific target can also really help you. For example, if you want to kill all entities that have type Minecraft item, for example, this will clear all the items from the floor. So, you know, every item that's going to float in the air at one point or another is going to be a Minecraft item. And we're going to summon it at exactly the same chords because it wants chords now as the player is. And now it's going to be interesting because we first want to give it some MBT. And what we're going to give it first is a tag. An attack is something incredibly powerful because attack means I can give any item that is exactly the same as another. For example, I have 64 diamonds. If I change one of the items and give it attack, then it's different from all the other items. So that means I can target it later on any way I want. Now let's give this tag a name and that's going to be shop item 001. Now then we're going to specify which items it's going to be. So let's do item and an item is a JSON because we've already seen this all the time when we do data get on an item or on a block on the chest you'll see the items will have an ID of course and let's just make it a stone and count is 1B and you might think well this is not the item we sold but no that doesn't matter 
we don't know the data yet of the item that's being sold. First, we want a fake item and we're going to give a fake item to the player. But just before it hits the player, it's going to be a floating entity. And that's the only time we can target it and we can actually change it. Now, if I would run this command, we'll get a stone. It's going to have a tag, but you can't see that yet. But it's just a stone. And of course, we're going to put it on conditional. And now we can actually target that specific item we made. So let's do data modify. The entity type is Minecraft item, of course, just like we just did. And look at this. Tag. Yes, we want a tag, please. Shop item 001. And limit, you always have to limit it, is one. That if we have any other item just floating around per accident, we always just target one. Now, what type of entity we want to target? We want to target an item. And we want to set it from block. And we know the chords by now, 19663 minus 300. Of course, the items from slot 0B. So we modify the entity with a tag shop item 001. And we set it from the block data in the chest in the first slot. Let's change this to items because the chest will have items and not item. And now we're going to change the sign as well. And... Re replace the redstone to plank. So let's just grab both those. Perfect. And then those can go. Alrighty. So let's do a new item and let's do a little bit smaller batch size. So let's give this a go, right? We still have 194 in stock of andesite. Perfect. This is working perfectly. Okay, so let's change the item real fast. Let's go to crimson nilium. We'll have a batch of 16. And we're going to refill the stock to 64 looks perfect to me let's click it and there we have 16 crimson nilium and absolutely smoothened with the help of tag and summon so this is the guide and i'm really happy about it because this really smoothens up your stock without any problems and as soon as your stock runs out you can't buy any more i hope you like this guide it's a bit shorter you learned a lot of important things namely the tag so you can now target things directly please don't forget to subscribe we really need your support and there's going to be so much more Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next guide.